We're with Jonathan Browning, the CEO of our Volkswagen Group in the America. Um, and you've been really busy, but really yeah. good busy for the past three years. Good, good busy is an excellent description. So when you, when you look at how the Volkswagen uh, business has developed over these last three years, it, it really is very rewarding and a uh, real testament to our dealers, to our engineers, to the products in the marketplace, and, and particularly also with the addition of this new plant in Chattanooga. So, yeah, a lot been going on, but uh, good busy, as you say. Yeah. Uh, you said that you mentioned the, the plant in Chattanooga, but also the plant in Mexico, in Puebla, is very important. It's key for, for yeah. you here in the U.S., right? You know, uh, Puebla is a real foundation of our business, and uh, Puebla has been in existence a long time, but it continues to develop, and uh, the products that we receive from Puebla are very much at the heart of our business. So Jetta, the Jetta Sport Wagon, and now Beetle, and the convertible that we've new uh, revealed, revealed today. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Puebla also has improved in uh, amount of production, but also in quality. Yeah. There were years that they, there were some issues with the cars, but nowadays they're like, they compete everywhere in the world yeah. because you export some of those cars to Europe, to the rest of the world, yeah. right? Exactly, and you, you know, the, the U.S. market is perhaps the most open market in terms of uh, customer information, and with the advent of social media, of yeah. all of the third-party sites, I mean, you have to deliver customer expectations, and if you upset customers, uh, that, that gets spread very quickly, and so the quality from Puebla, the quality from Chattanooga, but also the quality from all of Overall, our plants yeah. has to be to the very highest level. And I think uh, what we've seen is, is very positive developments in, development in that respect. Okay, so t let's talk about a little bit about the, the new Beetle Convertible, which mm. uh, when you were doing really well in the U.S. In back yeah. in the 70s, that was one of the cars and the other was the, the minibus, yeah. right? Yeah. So now you bring back this one and it's amazing. We already drove it and yeah. congratulations to your team and you. Uh, so Tell us about a little bit about this car because you it's not only one car, it's like six cars, three yeah. special editions, exactly. three engines, a lot of options. Exactly, yeah. And and I you know, I think that, that just shows the uh, the power of the Beetle brand. I mean, the, the associations it has with uh, many people are incredible. Yeah. And I remember when I first arrived in the, the U.S. just over two years ago with the Volkswagen Group, everybody wanted to tell me about their, their Beetle story. It seemed like every family in America has some sort of Beetle story. I, I had a Beetle story. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it, it, it's wonderful. And, and it's part of that really rich heritage yeah. that we have the, you know, responsibility to look after but the opportunity to, to continue to grow and a uh, Beetle is, is much more for Volkswagen than just the number of vehicles we sell or the economic factors I mean it, it really is that heart and soul of the Volkswagen brand here in the US yeah and even though as uh, we were talking about like people really love the brand mm -hmm. love the car and like that there's a lot of competition too yeah so sure. that's why uh, you have to improve your, your cars mm -hmm. And the, the quality and, and, yeah. and the, the offering of uh, engines, yeah. diesel, for example, yeah. is very important yeah. too for the, for the Volkswagen yeah. Group in general, yeah. not only Volkswagen, yeah. right? No, you're absolutely right. I mean, the the competition is is very intense. There's some great you know, vehicles in the marketplace, but the the nice thing is you know, what is happening now is is people they have this this kind of sympathy towards yeah. VW that we've just been talking about, but they're also now realizing that it's not just an aspirational product that maybe is out of reach, but it's actually accessible. It, it's affordable. And um, what we're seeing is more and more people say, ah, ah, yeah, I can afford this you know, very strong, very powerful German engineered uh, vehicle sourced particularly within the North American region. And, and that, that is uh, a very attractive proposition for many people in the U.S. Yeah, but not only afford, uh, uh, people most want the cars. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you were talking about yesterday in your presentation about how it's product number one. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the key. Clear. And then it's like awareness of yeah. the brand. But then, like people really, when they get to decide, okay, yeah. I'm gonna get for this one because it's yeah. it's good. So that's been the key of your success in the past three years, and I guess is the yeah. the path for the next few years. And and, and that's what will make it sustain growth. So it's having the right products, but it's also uh, making people appreciate uh, what VW represents today, not just their, their kind of historical rec recollections, but yeah. what it represents today, German technology that is accessible, that is uh, a product 
for me right now. And so uh, it, there's a lot of enthusiasm amongst many people, but we've still got the, a job to do in terms of educating even more people as to, to what Volkswagen represents. And I think yeah, you mentioned the, the, the TDI, uh, clean diesel technology. Yeah, we're still only scratching the surface. I mean, yeah. we, we have uh, very loyal customers. We have very enthusiastic customers. Uh, but, for example, with Passat, we now see up to 30% of our, our build of Passat with the, uh, the clean diesel yeah. technology. And um, that's growing. Uh, U.S. manufacturers are now beginning to uh, introduce diesels to their lineups as well. And, and that gives us a huge opportunity for further growth. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about small groups of enthusiastic people, and yeah. uh, I want to ask you some, something that you probably won't answer, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> the Try Sirocco, anyway. the Sirocco, uh, there must be a, a small group yeah, of people, yeah. I don't know how, how big or small actually, mm -hmm. that would love to have that car yeah. in the States. Yeah. No, I, that, that's, that's a vehicle that I'm, I'm yeah, very enthusiastic about. Um, you know, with the Golf R, that was one of the first yeah. uh, product decisions I took. Uh, when I arrived here to bring the Golf R to the US, and, and that's a, an amazing vehicle. Scirocco is as well. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the crisis in 2008 hit at a time when the, those investment decisions would have had to be made. So it's not possible to um, federalize the Scirocco in yeah. this current life cycle. But we'll have to see about the, the future. Maybe another three good years and then we'll maybe, see. Maybe, maybe. Let's hope. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time, Jonathan. I know you're uh, very busy here at the LA Auto Show. And uh, also I admire your energy because you've been going nonstop <laughs> all the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Esto es Autos 060 y como les digo siempre, no quiten la vista de la carretera y mantengan los oídos en Autos 060. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.